I don't know if really I can choose a favorite of all these things that we've had today. This, I keep coming back to in my head as one of my fondest memories of being in Tijuana. But now you've ruined me with the torta. Well, that's not really a taco, but it's sort it's of like a, a, it's sort of, well, it's a taco in a torta. It's a taco in a torta, <laughs> and it counts. Okay, we'll just, it well, it counts. Let's put it in here because now I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be dreaming of that one. I am smack dab in the middle of a taco crawl with a group of friends from Tijuana. A full day dedicated to Tijuana's taquerias. This city has unbelievable street food. We actually started our journey early in the morning south of town, down in Rosarito at Tacos El Yaqui, the original Los Perrones, a place that's justly famous for carne asada tacos. Good, buenos días. ¿Qué tenemos? Arrachera, ¿no? Arrachera. Pues, ¿qué quieren? Pues, It seems clear that the wood fire gives that steak an unbelievable flavor. You can smell that mouth-watering aroma of searing meat a block away. But the trick, they say, is to steam the grilled meat for a few minutes to make it tender and juicy. Then they heap it into flour tortillas, top it with beans, onions, cilantro, salsa, tangy grilled jalapenos complete the picture. Let's do this. I'm drooling thinking of these flavors and smelling the charcoal. Ugh, really delicious looking. This is like a whole meal in a taco, isn't it? Yes, yes. You notice on the sign that they call these Mexican candy? <laughs> Good to have every day. I love oh, yeah. the, the, the chili like this. Charred, Charred on the charred. outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you think these are so good? Probably the wood, the wood curl. Because he's cooking over wood, not yeah. charcoal. It's um, oak, not mesquite. Yeah. And then, of course, all that cool stuff that they put on top of it. The salsa de chile de arbol. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and the beans. Mm -hmm. And the beans. And mix it. Yeah, it, it really is like a whole meal just in a, in a tortilla. Anybody want the last little bit of candy? OK. <laughs> These are really good, but um, you know we got a lot more stops today. <laughs> I think we have to pace ourselves. I could just stay here all day long and just oh, yeah. eat these, but we got to pace ourselves. I'm not pacing myself very well. I'm eating the whole thing. I'm trying to pace myself. <laughs> Next stop, a whole street of taco stalls in Tijuana, a place called Las Ahumaderas. Now, we got there early in the day, but my friends all told me that this place is really hopping late at night when the folks are all leaving the bars. Hola, buenos días. ¿Cuáles son las especialidades? These guys offer a fun twist on the traditional taco. It's called a vampiro, and it's made from two crispy tortillas sandwiching gooey cheese and fillings. We ordered one with carne asada, another one with chorizo, and one with tripe. How do you eat it? Like a sandwich. Like a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> you got. You got to show me. I gotta. I gotta understand it. You're just gonna pick it up like a tostada. Like a tostada. Like a tostada. Okay. That I can do. And it's I was trying. Like your fingers. I'm hoping so. Go for it. Go for it. Well, it's not yes. delicate. Mm -mm. Mm. But it's really good. It's really good. You got the crunch of the tostada and you got all the softness of the meat. When I like all those meats in All those meats and then the cheese. Just... Yeah, it all brings it together. Mm -hmm. This place must just be jam-packed at night. It goes really late? Yeah. It does? Four in the morning, probably. 
exploring them, were you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's we may right. just have to come back here again at the end of the day. This yeah, may be our maybe. final stop, <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, man. This is good food. Sergio took us to a touristy strip of downtown, a place that's being reclaimed by the locals, a place where Sergio just opened a bar that's become a huge hit with the hip 20-somethings of Tijuana. He loves this old-fashioned stand that has served traditional steamed tacos for decades. I, I don't think I understand what this one is. What kind of tacos are these? This is uh, the traditional like Mexican taco or canasta. You know? Oh, uh, like steamed, sudados. Sudados, sudados. Yeah. Yeah. Sweaty tacos. Sweaty tacos, <laughs> exactly. That's the ones the that are steaming in their own steam. <laughs> and so what kind of, what do you order here? Your, Basically the beef. beef. Beans and chicharron. chicharron. Yeah. What do you like the best? Uh, I think beans. Beans? Yes. I prefer beef, beef? actually, yeah. And your chicharron. Okay. I can do chicharron. Oh, I want to get chicharron, too. OK, okay so <laughs> or, let's order. So this isn't tourist food. What, so why would you put a place in this area? We decided to put a, a bar in this area because we try to reconnect, you know, the feeling of downtown for the locals. And I don't know, I think that Tijuana in general is a really melancholic city. So downtown is the perfect spot to actually, you know, feel that energy. Well, when I was here a few months ago, and we were down on 6th, the 6th the, the that street. your bar is. And it was Saturday night, and it was jam-packed. Not a tourist in sight, it was all locals. locals. And people were having a ball, and they were just all out filling the streets with all kinds Alive, of again. life. It was beautiful. Yeah. And of course, there's always good street food around taquerias and the tortas and the things that Tijuana are just absolutely famous for. Yeah. Street tacos. <laughs> Street tacos yeah. in this town are unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know this was supposed to be a taco crawl, but these guys wouldn't let me go anywhere else until we got tortas from a place called Washmobile. I mean, tortas are street food like tacos, so I went along, and it only took me a couple of seconds to understand why they were so insistent. Now, you have to explain to me why it's called Washmobile. I don't, I don't understand that part. Well, a long time ago, right over here, there used to be a car wash. Oh, and that makes sense. That's when they started coming. And this was the tortas that were sold at the car wash. Mm -hmm. I love that. You say that this is one of the things that people say they miss the most when they leave the one up. I understand it. I'm coming back here just to have these. El Maceteño is all about shrimp. From the limey agua chile to those legendary shrimp tacos. Spicy, garlicky shrimp and melted cheese in two corn tortillas. Spoon some avocado salsa over one of those shrimp tacos, and you've got the stuff dreams are made of. Like all good tacos, they get all over you here. You have to have them. Yes. A bunch of them. Oh, good. Now, you see that the tortillas, two tortillas, and they're kind of crispy with cheese in between them. So I just love that little bit of cheese in these. This shrimp taco has changed me. Ah, it is I'm very happy to hear that. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing yes. stuff. The flavor of the shrimps are delicious. And isn't that what street food's really all about? It's something real simple, but they do it right. Mm -hmm. They figure out that one thing that just makes theirs so much better than everybody else's. It's unique. Like, if you're going to do grilled meat, like a carne asada, do it with good meat, know how to do it, but cook it over wood. Give it that flavor. Or if you're going to do these, know how to cook those shrimp. It's, it, every one of them is, is done just exactly right and with really wonderful spicing. 
you know, and you got all the flavor of the chiles and you got the flavor of the lime and everything else. It's just, it's a perfect balance of stuff. And Definitely. that's what makes you so excited to eat. You want it. goosebumps. You want goosebumps. <laughs> that's what you want. The last stop on this day of pure pleasure was Tacos Salseados. Some of the locals call it La Ermita because it's on Ermita Street. Now think gourmet tacos if you can wrap your head around that concept. There's cool ingredients, unusual salsas, and some novel preparations. Okay, you guys love this place, right? Yes. Okay. Why? Why do you love it? What should we order? You gotta tell us about it. Because Sergio and I need some time. advice. <laughs> this first time yeah. is my second time. I like the quesataco. Uh, you have to explain. What is a yeah, quesataco? Quesataco is, a, for example, shrimps or a chut. But or what's the cheese? Where the cheese is like a chicharron. Oh, crispy. Oh, it's crispy, like they put yes. the cheese and inside, itself on the griddle and then when it gets crispy, they fold it like a yes. taco? That's really beautiful and very different than anything we've seen today. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm not sure I can, I can do all of this. You're right. It's like gourmet tacos. It's like gourmet tacos. And really good ones. Really good ones. It's not just fancy to be fancy. It's really tasty. You have to try this time. So, like so good. Can I have one? Definitely. So good. Where are you eating your taco down here? Con <laughs> permiso. I should have ordered that one. That's really good. That's really good. Well, this is good, but who would have thought smoked salmon tacos wrapped in crispy cheese? <laughs> With mushrooms. <laughs> After you get your hip tacos, there's an interesting collection of salsas to spoon on. Flavors like tamarind, chile pequin, and almond. A little more chile pequin. A little bit more, Cameron. I'm happy. Oh no, the last one I'm gonna do a little almond sauce. That's what? Almond. almond. Yeah, okay, here it is, salud. <laughs> I have nothing to salute with, except the taco. A little piece of taco, <laughs> all right. Now my favorite tacos in all of Mexico are ones from Mazateños in Tijuana. And you know what? They have this amazing salsa that they serve with mm -hmm. it. It's really easy to make, but it's, it's remarkably delicious. It's an avocado salsa that has a little bit of peanut, I think, yes. ground into it. At least that's the way that we're going to make gonna our do version it. of it here. So we're going to start with that salsa. And let me see. I need to cut open a lime for you to squeeze into the blender there. I'm going to put some cilantro in with the lime juice. I'm going to put in a couple of serrano chilies. And our secret ingredient here, peanuts. Serrano's in. And now avocado. Two sides apart. Avocado into the blender. You need to add in salt, and you want to put that on the blender and blend it to a smooth puree. Let's taste it. Oh, thank you very much. You'd never think that that combination of peanuts and avocado would be so utterly delicious, like yeah. a match made in heaven. But in this salsa, to me, they really, really are. Okay, so the famous Masateño tacos are chili shrimp tacos. And the first thing I'm gonna do to make them, or my version of them, is to chop up some shrimp. 
And I'm going to toast the arbol chilies. And I'm going to chop up some garlic to add some flavor to it. And I'm going to gather all the herbs, spices, and grate the cheese that goes on top of each one. Now to make the filling for these shrimp tacos, you need to start with some butter that you were going to melt into the same pan that we toasted the chilies in. And now I'm going to scoop up all the chopped garlic and add that to the pan with the melted butter. Now that that's done, we're going to add a little bit of pepper to this. And I'm going to get some oregano to crumble in there. and. Chicken broth. We're going to need two thirds of a cup to add to this. You got your chilies to get in there as well? Yes. Now we're going to turn the temperature up to about medium high because this is going to need to simmer briskly for about uh, seven or eight minutes until it reduces to just a couple of tablespoons of broth. When you hear it sizzle like that, you know that most of the broth has reduced, put the shrimp in it, stir it, it'll only take about three minutes or so for the shrimp to cook over that medium high heat. This is one taco that before I get it to my mouth, my mouth starts watering so much because I love this taco. When you're talking about steak tacos, the first question that everybody wants to have answered is what's the perfect cut to use for your steak tacos? Well, of course, skirt steak comes to mind, but it's certainly not the only cut that you can use. In fact, I've got six different cuts in front of me, all of which would make really good steak tacos. Well, let's start with the skirt steak since that's so popular. What a lot of people don't know is that there are two skirt steaks on each side of the carcass. One that they call the inner skirt steak, which is thicker and well, a little tougher. And then one that they call the outer skirt steak that's thinner and tenderer. Flank steak, Another very popular choice for making steak tacos. We've got two over here, tri-tip and sirloin tip, both that come from the sirloin section of the animal. And then we've got two lesser known cuts. We've got the flat iron and the top blade, both of which come from the chuck. Now, when it comes to marinades in Mexico, they tend to stay fairly simple and fairly light and not long time marinades. So I'm going to make one that's going to combine some limes with a little bit of Worcestershire and Mexican oregano, a little salt and pepper. Very simple. To make the marinade, start by juicing two limes. Then peel and chop four roasted garlic cloves. Add black pepper, salt, and Mexican oregano. Now, the last ingredient that's going to go in here is Worcestershire sauce. Now, in Baja California, where carne asada tacos reign supreme, a lot of the cooks use soy sauce, so you could feel free to follow their lead. I think it has such a distinctive flavor that I like to replace it with Worcestershire sauce or what almost every Mexican kitchen has, which is Hugo Maggi. I'm going to choose the skirt steaks to marinate, the flank steak, and then I think I'll use the top blade and the flat iron as well. Take our light marinade, 
drizzle that over the top. Make sure that they're coated nicely both sides and let them sit for about 20 or 30 minutes. That's all this is going to need. This isn't a marinade for tenderizing. This is a marinade for flavoring. Now, my guess is that a lot of you cook on gas grills, but you're a little frustrated because you'd like to get some of that flavor of wood grilling into your food. So what do you do? Well, my recommendation is, well, you could buy these wood chunks like that, or maybe even collect fallen branches in the yard and then break them into smaller pieces that you could lay directly over your gas flame. Now, this particular grill has a drawer that's right above those gas burners, and I could just throw these little branch pieces and some of the large chunks in there. Right away, those will ignite and they'll start to smell like a wood fire. Now, another alternative, which might appeal to some of you, is to buy the little wood chips and put them into a little smoker box. These things are very inexpensive. And then just lay that directly over the gas flames. It'll ignite just right away. And I think that'll give you what you're looking for. I can smell the fire starting to catch right now, so I think I'm just about ready to grill. You know what makes these so good? is that charred grilled flavor that you get in the exterior of the jalapeno. So you cut the stem of each one off and then just scrape out the seed pod and the seeds. You don't have to be too meticulous. This is a pretty rustic dish. And then cut the jalapeno into about quarter inch pieces there. And they're ready to dress with lime and salt. thing about going to a taqueria is that everybody you can kind of customize and no matter how simple the food is you can always put on salsas and mm -hmm. well of course you can always squeeze on limes and the onions and cilantro are an ever-present part of building good tacos I think in Mexico yeah it's, what's fun about sharing it with a lot of people everybody gets their own special bite <laughs> <laughs> 